This three-member girl group created by A100 Entertainment vanished from the music scene almost as fast as they appeared. So who were they? Their name was Zoom. They were only active for a short amount of time, literally one year from 2020 to 2021. So what happened to them? Well, let's talk about it. Former Neon Punch members Ian, Dayan, and Beka re-debuted on September 24th, 2020 with the single Da La La. Zoom was originally set to debut on August 12, 2020. However, when staff members came in contact with COVID-19, quarantine protocols ensued until everyone tested negative. This debut definitely caught my attention at the time because it's such a fun, upbeat party song that makes you just want to dance and move. I was definitely excited to see what type of music the ladies would continue to crank out after witnessing this banger. But unfortunately, there wasn't much after this. So, we are supposed to, okay, so what ended up happening is, there were two other former members of Neon Punch, and they were supposed to make the final lineup of Zoom as well, but ultimately they did not. Dohi was supposed to re-debut, but during Zoom's promotion, she couldn't participate for personal reasons, and eventually ended up going on hiatus. Then there was May, who opted out of re-debuting to concentrate on her academics, which I don't blame her, you know. Being a scholarly woman is also very important, so... It's good that she took that step. So the next project that the ladies released can't even really be considered a comeback because it was attached to an OST called Please Don't Hate Him with the title track being 100%. lip gloss these are the only songs we were given from zoom according to all k-pop their agency took their official took to their official youtube page to announce the disbandment of zoom and this is what the statement says we appreciate your support and heartily thank you but we announce that to the public zoom is disbanded yeah that's literally all they had to say no explanation just like that you know i don't know about you guys but I'm just not satisfied with that statement. It doesn't tell us what really happened. So I looked into why Neon Punch disbanded in the first place for clues to correlate as to why Zoom met the same fate. According to All K-Pop, back when Neon Punch was going through disbandment on August 11, 2020, their agency released a lengthier statement in regards to the situation, and it reads, Unfortunately, we are no longer able to bring fans to five-member Neon Punch, despite how long many have waited for their return. We are sincerely apologetic for this. However, we have come to the conclusion to disband the team, Neon Punch, due to the company's financial struggles, the after-effects of COVID-19, and the fact that two of the members have decided to halt their promotions now this makes more sense as to why zoom probably got shoved debuting a new group while not totally recovering from the last group might have been why zoom tanked so fast so i went to the comment section to see what you guys had to say and this is what i found someone says what the heck why would you debut a group you can't even manage only to break it after two songs take some members onto a new group and then disband that one too after one song that screams poor management too bad because they have potential despite their extremely tragic sales if only the agency would have released digital stuff they could have lowered some of the costs and hopefully keep them going for a longer time that makes sense another one says 
Here's another so-called agency with a group that disbanded after one or two songs. Agencies like that should be illegal. Agency says, anybody can debut a group. Agency also says, I didn't know money was necessary for songs, music videos, stages, etc. Also, agency, I'll disband the group after one song. So here they're just like making fun of the group. Well, the agency that produced the group, which is also true. Another person says, because every newly formed company puts together a group and debuts them in hopes of hitting it big right off the bat. Occasionally it works out, the company builds up on reputation and becomes known, but most of the time it doesn't work. It's a risky gamble, and the biggest mistake most companies make is basically throwing all their funds into the debut, then going broke, and when they don't make up the expected numbers. It also didn't help that they debuted the group during the pandemic time, so there's less promotions they can do. Since a lot of the rookie groups often do school events, festivals, or busking to gain fans and earn money. At least the company actually disbanded them instead of holding on to them for years with nothing. Hopefully the girls can find better opportunities elsewhere. That makes a lot of sense, and I also have to agree with that. Well, there you have it, folks. Did you know who this group was? And were you just as surprised as myself to find out they disbanded as quickly as they formed? Let me know your thoughts down below, and I will see you on the next one. Masalam.